Welcome Geometry Stew to the Homework Help video, page 186. Let's go ahead and get started here with numbers uh, 1 through 4 in the first section. The directions read for numbers 1 through 4 to state the postulate or theorem that can be used to conclude that the triangles are congruent. Okay, so here we go. Let's jump right into this. This shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, number 1. How can we state that these two triangles are congruent? Well, look, notice we have two lines here they're intersecting so this angle here and this angle here are vertical angles so because they're vertical angles we can state that this angle here is congruent to this angle here so I have side angle angle or in other words angle angle side congruent to angle angle side so what postulate would I use angle angle side okay let's take a look at number two <clears throat> okay now notice that these two triangles share a side. They share this side here, okay? So what I have is I have an angle and then a side and then an angle in this triangle congruent to an angle and a side and an angle in this triangle. It might help you see it if we split the two triangles up real quick. Here's the top triangle and this angle is congruent to this angle this angle is congruent to this angle and this side is congruent to this side so we have angle side angle congruent to angle side angle okay so the answer would be angle side angle okay let's move on to number three okay number three uh, this one's pretty obvious here we have a side and an angle and a side congruent to a side and an angle and a side. So what postulate would you use to prove that these two triangles are congruent? Side, angle, side. Okay, number four. Um, let's go ahead and split these two triangles up. We have one triangle here and we have one triangle here. It really does help to split your triangles up, okay? We have this side congruent to this side and we have this side congruent to this side. And notice <coughs> the two triangles share the side right here. So if they share that side, we know this side here has to be congruent to this side here. So how do we know that these two triangles are congruent? Side, 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 okay? Moving on to number five. <clears throat> okay, the directions for five, six, and seven state um, to uh, find the missing third congruence that must be given to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF use the indicated method. Okay, well, first of all, it would be very helpful to get pictures up here of triangles ABC and DEF. So I'm going to draw them very quickly. It will just help us see students what we're dealing with here, okay? All right, now, what are we given? A is congruent to D. Let me copy these so we can use these over and over on the other two problems. Okay, here we go. Now, we have A is congruent to D. We have B is congruent to E. Okay, now we want to use angle, side, angle. Now look, we have an angle congruent to an angle. We have an angle congruent to an angle. So what are we missing? to use angle side angle. We're missing this side right here. If we knew that AB was congruent to DE, then we could use angle side angle congruent to angle side angle. So what we're missing is AB congruent to DE. Okay, AB congruent to DE. Okay, moving on to number six. <clears throat> Okay, students, here we go. Now they tell us that A is congruent to D. So A is congruent to D. And we're also given that BC is congruent to EF. They, we want to use angle, angle, side. We actually have two choices here. We could say B is congruent to E, and that would work, right, students? We have angle, angle, side, congruent to angle, angle, side. So we could state <coughs> that angle B is congruent to angle E, or we can state that angle C 
is congruent to angle F. That would work too because we would have angle, angle, side congruent to angle, angle, side. So we can either state that B is congruent to E, which is fine, or we can state C is congruent to F, which is also fine. Okay, either way. All right, moving on to number seven. Okay, here we go. Angle B is congruent to angle E. Okay. Now AC <coughs> is congruent to DF, and we want to use angle, angle, side. Well, students, look, we could use A and D. That would work. A is congruent to D. We would have angle, angle, side congruent to angle, angle, side. Or we could state that angle C is congruent to angle F, and we would have angle, angle, side congruent to angle, angle, side. So you can state angle A is congruent to angle D. That would work fine. That would give you angle, angle, side. Or you could state angle C is congruent to angle F, and that would give you angle, angle, side. Okay, moving on to numbers 8 through 11. The directions say, to state the postulate or theorem that can be used to prove the triangles are congruent. So, here we go. Uh, first of all, notice that we have vertical angles here. Two lines intersecting, so this angle here is congruent to this angle here. So, we can definitely state that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. So, what do we have? We have angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. So, these two triangles are congruent by angle side angle okay <clears throat> number nine well it's pretty obvious guys we have we have side angle side congruent to side angle side so there's the answer side angle side okay number 10 um, let's see here it might help to split these two triangles up so I have a triangle like this in a triangle like this and we have this angle congruent to this angle and we know this is a right angle here so we know this is a right angle also so we know we have a right angle here and a right angle here and then these two triangles share a side right here so we know this side here is congruent to this side here so we have angle angle side congruent to angle angle side so how do we know these two triangles are congruent angle angle side. Okay, number 11. Okay, it would probably help to split these two triangles up. So there's one triangle to the left, there's one to the right, kind of more or less. And let's see, we've got slash here, slash here, two here, two here. Notice the two triangles share a side here. So this side here is congruent to this side here. So how do we know these two triangles are congruent? side, side, side. Okay? Okay, moving on to numbers 12, 13, and 14. They want us to find the third congruence that must be used to prove that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle STU. Okay? So let's go ahead and draw let's go ahead and draw our triangles here. And it's triangle PQR PQR STU. STU. Okay, let me go ahead and copy those so we can use those. <clears throat> and here we go. Alright, we're given that angle R is congruent to U. So angle R is congruent to U. We're given that angle P is congruent to S. And we want to use angle side angle. So obviously if we're going to use angle side angle, we have to have this side here congruent to this side here. And then we have angle side angle congruent to angle side angle. So what we're missing is side SU congruent to side PR. Okay, that's what we're missing. And so there it is. Okay. PR is congruent to SR. All right, moving on to number 13. <clears throat> okay, we are given in number 13 that 
angle 2 is congruent to angle, angle Q is congruent to angle T, and PQ is congruent to ST. And we want to use angle, angle, side, okay? Well, it has to be this angle here. Because if it was this angle here, we would have angle, side, angle. And we don't want that. We want angle, angle, side. So angle R must be congruent to angle U, okay? And now once I state that, once I state that angle R is congruent to angle U, now I have angle, angle, side congruent to angle, angle, side. Okay? All right, moving on to number 14. Okay, we have angle R is congruent to angle U, and we're told that PR is congruent to SU. Now, we want to use side, angle, side, okay? Well, we definitely can't use this here because this would be, if we had this side here uh, marked congruent with this side here, we'd have side, side, angle, okay? And we're trying to use side, angle, side, okay? So, it must be the other side. Let's check and see here. Let's try this, okay? <clears throat> Let's put two slashes here. Let's see what we have. Yeah, that should work. We have side, then the angle, and then a side congruent to a side, then an angle, and then a side. So the side that we're missing that we need to mark congruent is side QR is congruent to side or segment TU. Okay? Moving on to 15 and 16, they're going to be proofs, and so let's quickly... Um, do these proofs. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we have here. Um, we have that AD is parallel to CE, BD is congruent to uh, BC, and we need to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Well, let's put some angles in here real quick. I'm going to call this angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4. Okay? Now watch this carefully, students, okay? Look, I'm going to brainstorm here. I can definitely state that 2 is congruent to 3 because they're vertical angles, so I know I can state that, okay? I already have stated up here in my given that BD is congruent to BC. Now, is it possible to state that angle 1 here, and I really don't like this color, I really don't. It's very hard to see on this background here. So, here we go. Angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. There. Now I can easily state that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because they're vertical angles. Now, could I state that 1 is congruent to 4? If I could state that 1 is congruent to 4, look what I have. I have angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. And I think it's possible to state that one is congruent to four. Watch this. Parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay? Parallel lines cut by a transversal. Look what we have real quick. Watch this, students, okay? Look what we have for angles one and four. Watch this. When I flip this around, look at angles one and four. They're alternate interior angles. Look. This angle here, 1 and 4, are alternate interior angles. And we know that when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, We know that. And so I can state that 1 is congruent to 4 quite easily. So we're all set. Okay, here we go. Step 1, list out all your stuff. That's your given. Okay, Number 2. I'm going to state that angles 2 and 3 are what? Vertical angles. And of course, that would be definition of <coughs> vertical angles. Once I state their vertical angles, I can state angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. How could I state that? Well, vertical angles are always what? Congruent, okay? Now, for number 4, step 4, I'm going to state that angles 1 
and 4 are what? Alternate interior. And I know that by the definition of alternate interior angles. Okay? And then I can state they're congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And of course the reason is, is alternate interior angles are congruent when you're dealing with parallel lines. Okay? There we go. Well, look what we stated. In our given up here, we stated what? We stated BD. In our given, we stated BD is congruent to BC. It's right here in your given. Okay, so we stated that. I'm going to mark it in red. Okay, so we stated that this side here is congruent to the side here. But look right here. We stated 2 is congruent to 3. So we have this angle here congruent to this angle here. And look what we stated here. 1's congruent to 4. So we have two marks here and two marks here. Look what we have. We have angle side angle congruent to angle side angle. So yes, I can definitely state that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle EBC by reason of angle side angle. Okay? Hope this makes sense. Let's try number 16, okay? Okay, we're told that C is the midpoint. Okay, so we know that in our given. So this, this segment here is congruent to the segment here because C is right in the middle of the segment here. Okay, it's given to us. And we're also given that AB is perpendicular to AD. So we have a right angle here. And we have a right angle here. This is really easy, students. Look, all that we have to do is put an angle 1 here and an angle 2 here and and state they're congruent, they're vertical angles, and we have angle, angle, side congruent to angle, angle, side. Okay, not too bad. So, let's see what we have here real quick, okay? Um, well, we state our given. I'm going to slide this over here, try to make a little bit of room. Don't want to do that. Alright, slide this over just a little bit. Alright, there we go. Now, okay, we have our given. Okay. Now, notice what we're given. We're given that AB is perpendicular to AD and DE is perpendicular to AD. So we have to state, let's go ahead and call this angle 3 and angle 4. We've got to state their right angles. We haven't done that yet. So angles. 3 and 4 are what? Right angles. And I know that by what? Well, I have perpendicular lines up here. So my reason would be definition of perpendicular lines. Okay? Now, I've stated angles 3 and 4 are right angles. So now I'm going to state that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And we have a theorem or a post that we have one of our things that we've learned that said all right angles are congruent. Okay? All right angles are congruent. Now, uh, moving on to, let's see, angles 1 and 2. Angles 1 and 2 are what? They are vertical angles. And I know that because of the definition of vertical angles. And now I can state they're congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because vertical angles are congruent. So students, look what I've stated. Oh, I've, I've got to state one more thing. Sorry, guys. In my given, I'm told that C is the midpoint, okay? <clears throat> C is the midpoint. So I've got to state here very quickly that BC is congruent to CE. Okay, and the reason would be definition of midpoint. Now, look what I've stated. I'm going to circle it for you, okay? I've stated that 3 is congruent to 4. So, put a slash here and a slash here. I've stated 1 is congruent to 2. So, put 2 marks here, 2 marks here. I stated that BC is congruent to CE. So, put a mark here and a mark here. And I have angle, angle, 
side congruent to angle angle side there we go okay so I can state that these two triangles are congruent and my reason would be angle angle side and the C would be triangle ABC is congruent to triangle D E C okay all right hope that's helpful let's go ahead and continue on okay students here we go let's take a look at the diagram they've given to us here okay let's see what we have here um, first of all let's continue the triangle kind of got cut off a little bit in my picture here so there we go there's the rest of the triangle and that would be angle um B I believe yes B okay here we go um given that AO is perpendicular to BC so we have right angles here and B is congruent to C so this angle here is congruent to this angle here we're going to prove that this triangle over here this little triangle over here is congruent to this little triangle over here okay now really this is pretty simple because these two triangles share a side <clears throat> and they share this side right here so really it's going to be pretty easy to state that these triangles are congruent we have angle angle side congruent to angle angle side and I think it'd be very wise to draw a couple triangles here very quickly here's one triangle and here's the other triangle okay now in our given we were told that this angle is congruent to this angle and we know we have right angles here and right angles here okay so and this is a b c o and this is uh, a o c i'm going to call this angle one angle two angle three angle four okay well, my plan of attack is pretty obvious i'm going to go and put one and put my given okay now in my given I already stated here that angle B is congruent to angle C that's in my given right up here okay <clears throat> now next I'm going to state that angles 2 and 3 are what right angles and of course I can do that because of definition of perpendicular lines now number 3 I can state that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 and the reason would be right angles are what congruent and now for step 4 I can state that AO is congruent to AO and that's called the reflexive property okay reflexive so look what I have students in my proof I've stated that B is congruent to C so B is congruent to C and I've stated that 2 is congruent to 3 so this angle here is congruent to this angle here and I've stated this the side here is congruent to the side here so I have angle angle side congruent to angle angle side so step 5 I can definitely state the triangles are congruent by angle angle side and that would be triangle AOB is congruent to triangle AOC okay one more one more proof then we'll go on to some more problems okay here we go we're given that AO is perpendicular to BC so let's quickly uh, finish up our triangle here there's the rest of the triangle there we go this letter B so we know we have right and right angle here and BAO this angle up here is congruent to CAO this angle right here okay so again it's gonna be pretty simple students all that we're gonna to have to do is state that AO is congruent is congruent to AO we should be all set okay <clears throat> so here we go let's go ahead and quickly draw the uh, top triangle here and then we'll draw the bottom triangle here and let's see what we have okay uh, we have A B O and A O C and let's call these angles angle one well 
I guess we'll leave that angle alone. We'll call it this here, angle one, and this angle two, okay? So here we go. Uh, number one is our given. And of course, don't forget, in our given, we have stated that angle BOA is congruent to angle C. <clears throat> AO. Okay. Now, step two, I'm going to state that angle one, angles one and two are what? Right angles. And I can state that because of definition of perpendicular lines. And then the whole reason I stated they're right angles is I can now state that they're congruent. Okay. And that's because all right angles are congruent. Okay. Next, I can state that AO is congruent to AO. And of course, that's the reflexive property. Now, look what I've stated here, students. Watch this. I've stated that BAO is congruent to CAO. So this angle here is congruent to this angle here. I've stated that one's congruent to two, so this angle here is congruent to this angle here, and I've stated that this side here is congruent to this side here. So I have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. So I can definitely state that these two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. So triangle AOB is congruent to triangle AOC. Okay, right, moving on to our last four problems. And let's see what we have here in the directions. Okay, the directions state that <coughs> PQR is congruent to ABC. So here we go. Let's write that right here. PQR, triangle PQR is congruent to triangle ABC. Okay? So here we go. We have angle. We're trying to solve for X and Y. So here we go. Um, angle R, angle C. Okay, look. Angle R is the third angle, right? And angle C is the third angle, so we know R is congruent to C. So here's angle R. Here's angle C. They're congruent, so we can set them equal to each other. So 5X plus 70 equals 24X minus 25, okay? Now, bring the 70 over, make it negative, and we get negative 95. Bring the 24X over and make it negative, and we get negative 19X, okay? Now, uh, let's see, 45, yeah, divide by negative 19, and X equals 5. So there we go, we're doing really well. Now, let's see what else we know. Um, QR and BC. Notice they give us QR and BC. Now look over here. QR is the last two letters and BC are the last two letters, right? So that means they're congruent. QR is congruent to BC. So since I know they're congruent, then I can take 4Y plus 2 and set it equal to x plus y because 4y plus 2 is what? qr and x plus y is bc and they're equal, they're congruent to each other, okay? So, let's see what we get here. Okay, well first of all, for the x, we can put a 5. So now where the x is, I put a 5, okay? Uh, because x equals 5. Now, <coughs> Bring this y over and make it a negative y. Bring this 2 over and make it a negative 2. And I'm left with 3y equals 3. Now divide both sides by 3 and y equals 1. So there's my two answers. Okay, moving on to number 23. Okay, and let's go ahead and copy this so we have this from now on. Okay, so let's quickly do this, this, and this.
and here we go, number 24. All right. <clears throat> now, let's see what we have here. We're dealing with angle R and C, right? Look, here's angle R, and here's angle C. Now, notice they're congruent. Here's R, and here's C. They're both a third angle over, so we know they're congruent. So if they're congruent, we can set them equal to each other. So we have 90 minus R equals and then angle C is 13 okay so bring 90 over and make it a negative 90 and we're left with negative Y equals negative 77 <coughs> so if negative Y equals negative 77 then Y equals 77 okay now let's continue on here's PR and here's AC well, let's see what we have Here's PR right here, look, PR, and here's AC. So they're, they're in the exact same place, so we know they're congruent. So I can take PR, 3X plus Y minus 1, equals AC, which is 32 minus X. Now, <coughs> where the Y is, I'm going to substitute 77, okay? So now I have 3x, 77 minus 1 would be 76, equals 32 minus x. Now bring your x over to the other side, it becomes a positive x. Bring your 76 over to the other side, it becomes a negative 76, okay? So we're left with 4x equals, uh, let's see, 44, negative 44, okay? So 4x equals a negative 44. Now divide both sides by 4, and x equals a negative 11, okay? So there's your two answers for x and y, negative 11 and 77. <clears throat> okay, moving on to 25. Now let's see what we have here. We're told that PQ is congruent to PR, okay? Now we better list some stuff out here, okay? Look, look carefully, students, okay? Watch this. We know that PQ is congruent to AB, okay? And we know that PR is congruent to what? Well, here's P, here's R. So PR is congruent to AC. Now, what do they tell us over here? PQ is congruent to, look right here, PR. So if that's the case, look, if PQ is congruent to PR and PR is congruent to AC, then I can also state that PQ is congruent to AC. And look at this. If PR is congruent to PQ and PQ is congruent to AB, then I can also state that PR is congruent to AB. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to need all of that, but it's really a good idea to list it all out. Now, if I went too fast, you need to back up the video and watch that again. Okay, it's real important that you see what I did there, okay? <clears throat> okay, moving on. Now, they tell us here that PQ is 5X minus 31 and QR is negative 3 minus Y. Now, we know that PQ equals QR. Okay, PQ equals maybe not hold on one second here bc ab here we go okay students now watch carefully pq is congruent to ab right here okay so i can state that 5x minus 31 equals 9 minus y. Got it? Now, QR is congruent to BC. And how do I know that? Because look, here's QR and here's BC. Okay? So I can also set those equal. So I get in another color here, I'm going to use negative 3y minus 1 equals x plus 1. Now, here's my suggestion to you. Notice I have <coughs> an equation here with an x and a y and an equation here with an x and a y. 
I would use substitution. For example, I would bring this 1 over and I would make it a negative 1. So now I have negative 3y minus 2 equals x. Okay. Now look what x equals. x equals 3y minus 2. So come over here and where the x is, right here, put parentheses. Here's the 5. Bring the 5 down. Put parentheses and put for the x, put negative 3y minus 2. And then bring down your negative 31. Bring down your equals. Bring down your 9. Bring down your negative y. And now look, this whole equation here has y's. We can solve this for y, okay? So we have negative 15y minus 10 minus 31 equals 9 minus y. So now we have negative 15y minus 41 equals 9 minus y. Now bring the y over and make it a positive y. That would leave you negative 14y. Bring the 41 over and make it a positive 14. And you're left with 50. Okay. <clears throat> now let's see if we get a fraction out for this. I believe we do. Yes, we do. So divide both sides by a negative 14. And you get a negative. And if you reduce it, you'll get 25 over 7 which is the right answer okay now come right back up here what is x equal x equals negative 3y minus 2 right here so where the y is I'm gonna put negative 25 over 7 and then minus 2 equals x okay now negative 3 <clears throat> times negative 5 would be positive 75 over 7 <clears throat> minus 2. Now for 2, I'm going to put 14 over 7, okay? Because, understand, listen to me, 14 over 7 is the same thing as 2. 14 divided by 7. And why did I use 14 over 7? So I would have a common denominator right here. Now I can go ahead and subtract those two fractions. So 75 minus 14 would be um, 61 over 7. And that is the correct answer. So there we go. There's your x answer and there's your y answer, okay? All right, one more problem. We're finally done. Here we go. Okay, let's see what we have here. Angle A. <clears throat> okay, we know that angle A right here and angle P are congruent because here's P the first letter here's A the first letter so I know that I have 15y minus 3 equals 43 minus x now next I have PQ and AB well they're congruent because look here's PQ my first two letters and here's a b my first two letters so i have 11 minus x equals 3y plus 1. now it really doesn't matter how you use substitution for me i'm going to get this x all by itself okay so <clears throat> i'm going to leave the negative x here i'm going to bring this 11 over and make it a negative 11. so now i'm left with negative x equals 3y minus 10 positive 1 and negative 11 is negative 10. Now, x is not by itself, so I go through and I change all the signs. Make the negative a positive, make the positive a negative, and make the negative a positive. So there we go. x equals negative 3y plus 10. So I come over here. Here's my x. So I'm going to bring down my 15y. I'm going to bring down my negative 3. <coughs> bring down my 43 and then bring down my negative sign, then put a parenthesis, and put negative 3y plus 10. It's so important you put a parenthesis, guys. You have a negative sign up front here, okay? Very important. Now, students, what I'm going to do next is bring down my 15y, my negative 3, then bring down my 43, and then take this negative sign and multiply it through, okay? Negative times a negative is a positive and negative times a positive is a negative. Now, let's see what we have left. Uh, bring your 3y over and make it a negative 3y, 
Okay? Bring your negative 3 over and make it a positive 3. And what do we have? Well, 15 minus 3 is 12y. 43 minus 10 is 33. Plus 3 is 36. Now divide both sides by 12 and y equals 3. So there we go. We're doing really well. Okay, now come over here. And where the y is, substitute 3. So x equals, bring down your negative 3. Then put parentheses, put a 3. Then positive 10. Well, let's see, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 10 is 1. So there's your two answers, 1 and 3, okay? Pretty tough problems. They're, they're, they're good thinking problems for you, okay? Okay, guys, that's it. Um, hopefully this video has been a help to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.